it's Garnet Charlie on Paradigms Part 2. Some thoughts, some challenging ideas pertaining to the paradigms of religion. Now, I think we've all discovered that discussing religion with people can be very troubling. It can be very challenging. It can, it can be something that's, that's uh, fraught with all sorts of argument and hard feelings and people are very defensive and very defiant and sometimes uh, you haven't got a ghost of a chance to share ideas because of their religious doctrines or their religious viewpoints. Well, I think that the, the concept of a doctrine really kind of fits this area, this idea of a paradigm. How things are and how things have to be. Now within the looking at religion, of course, we can look at any kind of religion, whether it's a Eastern religion or whether it is um, some sect of Christianity or whether it's Islam or however you might want to examine it. People have certain understandings and certain doctrines. Those doctrines are inviolate. They cannot be argued. Uh, they are assumptions of how God revelation is and how we approach this this life with God. And a lot of them become very ceremonial. They become very, uh, uh, in a sense, just uh, a routine of practice. We see these routines in the type of buildings and in the type of services. And I'd like to especially look at the idea of the Christian religious paradigm. I'm sure that there are things that you can name and uh, any of these other kinds of sects. But, for example, there's the paradigm of the house of God. The house of God is thought to be a building too often. In most cases, they think that the house of God is a place where you go to worship. In Christianity, in fact, this is contrary to the teachings of Yeshua, the Lord Jesus. So, he's, he says that the temple of God <clears throat> is with us, in us, and therefore the idea of going to a place to worship in itself is kind of a strange idea. And, and not entirely correct. We can go and have fellowship in these various places where believers associate, but uh, we, in, in, in fact, do carry the life of God within us. Our bodies are the temple of God, temple of the Holy Spirit. Within the idea of a church service, the church service is very, very ritualized. And even if people say they are not religious, uh, the ongoing program, whether it be a 45-minute program or a mass or an hour program or two or three hour uh, Pentecostal session, things can be very, very ritualized and very uh, uh, programmatic. So, we all, I think, who have come out of some form of a Christian religion or some form of Christian worship, go to a church and there is a, uh, within the building, we have certain things that we see and recognize as normal. We have the pews, we have the altar, we have the pulpit in various degrees of placement, some high and some low. Uh, and all of those, in a sense, are paradigms that the leaders lead and the preachers preach and the teachers teach and the, the priests minister on behalf of God on our behalf or, or however that may be. The idea of the congregation uh, is a very strange one. It's a strange paradigm because it assumes that there are those who are capable and and qualified to bring forth uh, revelation from God and some that are merely to receive it as a, sort of a, a token teaching to uh, help them along and uh, this also uh, is not biblical because as Christians, uh, the Lord's final commandment, the Lord's final um, 
challenge to all the disciples was to make disciples of all nations and teaching them all the things that that the Lord had revealed to the original disciples. So being a disciple is quite different than just being a person who attends and goes through the motions of listening to a sermon or a teaching or a mass from day to day. We'll touch on more of this a little later. Cornet Charlie, talking about religious paradigms. This is Paradigms Part 2. Talk to you again soon.